everyone. My name is Rick Jenkins, and I'm coming to you today on behalf of SC Biz News, the media company that serves high-level business executives in South Carolina. Welcome to SC Biz TV. I'm glad you could join us for another episode of Industry Trends. In our most recent episode, I discussed South Carolina's employment outlook with Herb Duke. Herb is the founder and CEO at HTI, or Human Technologies Incorporated. But today we'll be discussing how the pandemic and other factors have impacted the state's construction industry over the past year. And we'll even take a look into our crystal ball and see if we can't predict how the industry will fare as we move forward in 2021. Here to help me with the conversation is Gary Caldwell. Gary is the founder and CEO at Caldwell Constructors. They are a full service construction company in Greenville. Gary, how you doing, buddy? Doing well. Thank you, Rick. It's good to have you, man. Uh, I know you're crazy busy, right? It has been a crazy few weeks for sure. <laughs> I bet it has. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we are going to talk about what the construction industry looked like in a crazy 2020, and we will talk about what the construction industry, hopefully, um, we'll take a stab at what it's going to look like in 2021. But before we do that, I just want to mention uh, a project that you guys have been doing for a while, and I want to get an update on it because it is a really cool project. And I'm talking about the Woodside Mill Project, uh, which is uh, downtown Greenville, close to downtown on East Main Street. Now, Woodside Mill, once upon a time, was the largest under one roof mill in the world. Right. And you got your hands on it. Tell me what's happening over there. We've done major renovations outside and inside. It's 455,000 feet, converting oh, it to 309 incredible apartments, 16 foot ceilings, exposed heart pine, you know, having cleaned all the, the paint off the structure and off all the masonry. It's all exposed brick in the inside. Uh, uh, 800 new windows and those exterior openings. I mean, it's oh, just a fabulous place. In fact, yesterday we turned over what we call the common area, which is the, the middle lifeblood of it from a public perspective. Right. Uh, the, the fourth, there's a four floor wing to the right and a five floor wing to the west. Uh -huh. And we have already turned over the fourth floor, part of the third floor. And in the next two weeks, we'll turn over the balance of the east wing but the common area is done, so that's where the gym and the yoga studio and right. and conference rooms and the common shared spaces are. So pretty pretty big milestone yesterday. It was a, a pretty fun day. And when is this going to be all delivered? June. June. Oh, all in June. Right. We'll wrap things up. So. Well, I can't wait to get over there and take a tour. Can you give me a tour? Absolutely. I thought you could. All right, Gary. Let's move on. We're going to talk about the state of the construction industry in South Carolina, and I want to talk a little bit about what it looked like this past year, uh, and then we'll talk about what it hopefully is going to look like in the future. We're going to start with safety, though. Um, during 2020, lots of stuff happening, crazy times with the pandemic. I am sure that on a construction site, it is normal to have safety procedures and policies in place, but I bet uh, you had to do a whole lot extra in 2020. Tell me what that looked like. It was unbelievable. Of course, our first thought was we'd have to stop just shut down every all the projects completely right. and the stress of that for our employees obviously was huge for our owners who mm -hmm. have deliveries of Woodside Mill was absolutely no exception 18 month schedule and we were six months in and to think about stopping right. and af affecting the lives of 150 160 employees on that side ours and others was just uh, an, an incredible um, process but I'll, I'll tell you, we had wonderful conversations, particularly with two of our competitors, uh, friendly competitors, and we were talking once a week, what are we doing, what are we thinking about, right. what are the issues that we see, what are the solutions, what are the prevention measures, and that was incredibly um, um, helpful to know you can call somebody sure. that you could, you know, we're all in the same situation, never have experienced it before. Right, that, that's what I was going to say. It, it, you're both going through this, or all of you are going through it at the same time. You don't know what you're doing, right? I mean, for the right. most part, we're all learning as we go. As an industry, too, we had uh, AGC had national conference calls uh, every week or two weeks, national, where you, right. you zoom in and, and participate with uh, thought leaders for all the things that were happening, right. things that were working, things that were not working. And I mean, those were just, you know, you were 100% tuned in. All of us were working from home right. at that point in time. Right. Incredibly stressful. To, uh, I can no imagine. Question about it. We've gotten overly familiar with Zoom, uh, too much so, I believe. I don't care if I ever see another Zoom call, folks. Um, <laughs> But uh, let's talk about your internal staff. Um, they were probably impacted as like we all were, but not near to the degree that the other folks were. How were they impacted? And did you have to put things in place to where they could uh, more easily help those folks that are in the field on the job sites? Well, we were 
pretty lucky, uh, quite honestly. About a year and a half ago, two years ago, we made some invest investments in technology uh, that allowed us to work all of our accounting software from the cloud. And so basically, every we ended up investing in some more. Um, everybody had laptops, or most people had laptops. We really bought more monitors so they could have them at home and have them in the office without having to unplug and pack up and come back. So we just just invested right. in some monitors, which today is not that big of an expense. Uh, but everybody did that and worked remarkably well. Um, it, it was amazing what, what our team did together. Uh, communication was excellent. I missed being together uh, collectively, particularly yeah. for our kind of business. But right. I know how they, you feel about that. Function. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Uh, let's move on. Tell me about... Uh, permitting and job approvals. Now, uh, sometimes those things take a, a while under normal circumstances, but uh, back in March, April, May, we had offices that were shut down. What what were you experiencing at that time? Honestly, the, the, the city and county, the municipalities that we deal with mostly here in the upstate, I think prepared for that very well. They were all working from home, being very connected. Um, you know, s some challenges within some of the departments, but overall, I mean, they worked incredibly well to still receive and process mm -hmm. uh, and do uh, the responses um, for plan review comments. It, right. That really worked very well, um, amazing, quite honestly. So, What about financing and access to capital? Was there any delay in that type of thing? Did you have problems? Uh, what, did, what did that look like uh, six, eight months ago? Well, we've had a couple of projects without naming names, but the medical, the medical industry typically is pretty easy to finance, very high rates of, of loan to value, and that changed significantly. It you know, dropped down to 80, 85%. So that changed some, some deals for, uh, for, for those doctors. So it's, it delayed a couple of projects, but we had some that paused for maybe 30, 45 days, and we thought they would be off the books for a while, but they ended up coming back when they figured out things internally. Okay. Uh, they, they, it, in fact, we didn't, I think we had maybe one project that was terminated. Uh, that was planned, and right. uh, the rest of them may have been a little slower to get financing, but we're moving forward with them. So. As you talk to other people, and you talk about you talk to folks all over the country, and of course competitors in this area, uh, are other folks experiencing basically what you experienced, or did you just have a good go of it? No, I think everybody's had the same experiences from the best I can tell, right. at least those that we talk to often, uh, very right. much in a similar situation. Uh, how about finding suppliers and uh, raw materials? Uh, has that been impacted in some way? And if so, is it getting better? It is actually getting worse. The last couple of weeks, even the last day, has, has been a challenge. So we, for reflecting back on the lumber market in the last year, a product called OSB, it's just a, basically it's a oriented strand board, it's a sheathing used on roofing, has gone up 333% in the last 12 months. Uh, lumber products, 2 by 4s 2 by 6s 2 by 12s have gone up from 160 to 200 mm percent -hmm. in the last year. Structural steel doubled in 20, went from 500 a ton to 1,000 a ton. Today it's 1,300 a ton. So in three months it's gone up another 30 percent, 130 percent. In the last 20 days, we had one project that was repriced. It went up 17 percent in 20 days. And the delivery moved from May to October. Uh, so some mega projects across the globe um, are consuming a, a lot of steel products that are infect, affecting local projects as well. You know, well. we'll so get into uh, construction starts. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse yeah. me, Gary. But we'll get into construction starts here in a second, uh, and I want to talk a little more about that. But you know, when you say that, it, it just makes me think that I would assume when prices go up like that, you have no choice but to pass along those increases, at, at least some percentage of them, to the customer. Um, do you get people saying, uh, you know what, let's wait until the prices go back down? How's that work? Well, as an industry, we normally receive a price from a vendor, and it, they honor that price for 30 days. It's pretty well locked in. We have the same situation with our clients. Right now in the steel industry, the mills quote the suppliers. If, it, if, our, if our project quotes at 2 o'clock, right. their price is at good past 6 p.m. that day. I mean, that is incredibly extreme. So it's hard. They try to somehow hold on to those prices, include some contingencies to cover what they're expecting. Um, and we do the same with our clients. But it, ours is kind of an open book process, and it's a little different with us. Um, right. But being so open book. Um, but it's tough. For the bid market, I can't imagine what's happening yeah. uh, in those challenges. Because uh, exactly. every, everybody's 
um, is really, really impacted by that. And availability of products as a result of that is, it, right now, is particularly challenging. Metal affects uh, everything to handles on a sheetrock container. I really and truly, that there's a shortage of all those miscellaneous supplies that's having an impact on all of us. Things that folks like me would never ever think about, but I suppose when I hear you talk about it, it makes sense. Uh, you know, normally, and anybody who is selling anything, right, we, we uh, always do better when we can uh, network and when we can talk to folks and build relationships, and that has been difficult over the past year. Has that impacted business? You know, I don't sense that it has. With our, most of our clients are, are local. I've uh, got great relationships, and so we're talking a lot. They're in the same situation we're in, and you just find a way to do it, Rick. And thank goodness for Zoom and Microsoft Teams and, and those things that have allowed us to, to connect and still be very productive. So I wouldn't say it's, it's – I don't think it slowed things down, quite honestly. I really don't. Well, that's a good but, thing. Yeah. It's been more, way more difficult for us, I know. You know, I don't, I don't get as many opportunities for, for this right here. Um, but just like you said, uh, we made it work, and, uh, and we've all pivoted in one way or another, as they say, right? All right, Gary, let's talk about um, commercial and industrial construction starts. Uh, and, and, you know, what, what I'm wanting to hear, I suppose, is in 2020, thankfully it's in our back rear view window, in 2020, what did it look like as we compare to 2019? I'm assuming we took a dip. How big was that dip from your perspective? We had a lot of clients that that paused their projects until they could figure out how it would affect them. A lot of our projects were medical, so obviously they were trying to figure out what to do, how they could see patients, how they could handle design and construction, and if that model need to, needed to change because of how they needed to see patients, right? That was early right. in the process. So right. we had quite a few medical projects that just stopped until they could figure it out. We, we had one or two that really were um, thoughtful about some ideas to how to pursue it, and we considered quite a few opportunities for a, for a client, which were incredibly interesting. Um, but we saw quite a few pauses. But again, as I said a minute ago, most of those projects ended up queuing up and continuing as planned. Right. So we didn't see that much of an impact. In fact, uh, some architects that we work closely with, they felt that they had some projects that stopped in design and were, were moved out some. Right. But those ended up, for the most part, coming back. And I think everybody's book of business for 21 and 22 seems pretty full. Uh, the apartment market is still mm -hmm. uh, growing significantly. The, the, the prices on land, I have, a, again, a cop client that paid a significant amount for a piece of property in downtown Greenville, and, and it's just nowhere, the end is nowhere in sight in terms of property values, but we're continuing to see those projects move forward regardless uh, is what we're seeing. And it's, well, uh, at some point it will pause. I don't think there's uh, any question about that. Of course it will. You mentioned the mm -hmm. word forward, and so I'm going to stick right there for a second. Uh, it strikes me that construction mm -hmm. business is one that uh, that is uh, heavily reliant on forward sales, right? You, I'm assuming that uh, you have a pipeline of business, and and you can look, and you're able to look forward a little bit, maybe more so than in some other industries. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming that that is the case. Uh, it, if it is, is it possible that we haven't, that you haven't, and your industry hasn't experienced the complete negative impact of the pandemic just yet? I, I don't think we have, with respect to material prices and the availability of things in the marketplace, mm -hmm. this impacting our, our ability to deliver for our clients. I don't think we're finished with that uh, at all, Rick. I think we're going to continue to feel that. And I don't know, and I, the people around me don't know when that's going to change. We had exactly. a long conversation this morning with someone about our projections, and it, you just you don't know. I mean, Texas, for example, uh, there's a, a plant closed in Texas that makes adhesive, adhesives for windows and even for plywood, mm -hmm. and their plant shut down, so that's affecting the ability of the major manufacturers of plywood to produce a product and sell it. Right. Just just because of what's happened in Texas, that has nothing to do with the pandemic. That's just the you know, issues in Texas. So. Other than residential construction, there are, you know, I guess from where I sit, I think of four main sectors of, uh, of construction. I think of uh, industrial and commercial, maybe heavy civil, like, uh, like highways or something mm -hmm. like that, and um, environmental. Uh, do you have any feel for if some of those sectors were more impacted than others? I would assume residential was impacted a lot because of their 
just the wood and the, the percentage of that cost is to home construction. And with it going up products 200 to 300% and a lot of, at least the custom builders that I know have stopped uh, stop building the more expensive homes, but you see a lot of the the, the um, uh, stock home kind of folks are continuing to to build product. Right. I'm not certain how they're doing that, but yeah. a lot of the custom right. that we've seen has slowed down until the market can stabilize some. But that's uh, not a segment that we're in. That's just what I've seen from conversation. That's right. Other than residential, uh, what do you, how has commercial and industrial fared? I think pretty strong, quite honestly. I mean, our our our, our business has been strong. Our project load's been good, um, and so it's it's. I think we fared pretty well as an industry here in, in the Upstate. Any idea? Uh, do you think we're going to get a wave of construction projects that begin uh, to happen because people has, as you mentioned a minute ago, have paused? And if we do get that wave. Where, what sector do you think it will come in? Is it going to be back in residential? I really don't know what the market is in residential, Rick. I really That's probably right. shouldn't venture into that, but I think the commercial industrial market will will grow. Yeah. Uh, as those projects that have been slowed and the market the prices of product will come down, I think we'll see more that um, push forward aggressively. Um, Gary, let's uh, let's stick with commercial, but I want to get a little bit more specific and talk about office space. You know, I think we've all done a whole lot of things differently over the past year, right? We've talked about pivoting, um, and SC Biz TV, which you're on right now, was one of our pivots in the past year that we did just to do business a little bit different way. But one of the things that we've all done is we've all started working remotely to one degree or another. And I think, and I said this to Herb Dew during the employment outlook, I think that when all this is said and done and the pandemic, knock on wood, is safely behind us, that working remote is going to be one thing that sticks. Companies will have discovered that we can do it, um, that the job will get done, and that we can be productive. Maybe not necessarily in your industry, okay, but generally speaking. And so that brings me to the question, and that question is, do we think at some point that um, commercial construction will uh, experience a decline because of this very thing, people getting out of the brick and mortar uh, as opposed to maybe expanding. I don't think it will, the total volume will change. I think how you approach the volume probably will. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we have some clients that right now are totally revamping how they're doing business. One happens to be moving from a from one office building to another office building, but that office building is drastically different instead of having uh, 45 closed offices and a lot of open offices, it's about five closed offices and about 100 open office cubicles or share, even shared spaces where people every right. day when they come in, they may go to a different office, which is really foreign to me. Right. But nationally and other places that have tried it, I guess even pre-COVID, pre uh, it has worked and their, their whole new model is based on that which uh, I couldn't thrive in that situation, but uh, yeah. they, they know that they can and they're doing that. So uh, I think they'll, I expect there to be a lot of renovation of existing office facilities where people are morphing and changing. Mm -hmm. And so instead of building, there'll be some building new where people have the capital and want to have the best environment and they will build new and others will take advantage of those opportunities of facilities in the market right. to renovate them and maybe their shared spaces with mul multiple businesses. Right. Um, Possibly, yes. that's what I see. So yeah. I think I think construction will remain stable. It will just be in different parts of the market for that's the next a good couple thought. of years. That's a good thought, and it seems logical. Tell me this: I'm going to ask you to look into the to Gary's crystal ball, and six months from now, do you think that you specifically will be less busy, more busy, same busy? I think probably more busy. Do you? I do. And that's a good thing. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Just based on what we have in the queue with, with clients, thing, people that are considering projects that we know about. They're just not in design yet. I feel like it's going to be a pretty productive 21 and 22, personally. Uh, I'm going to ask you to continue to look in that crystal ball for a second, and there is no way you're going to know this, but it's why you're here, and it's why I get to ask you the question, when do you think in your industry we'll be completely back to normal? I'd, 
I'd say I would hope by the end of the year. This is this is mm -hmm. March. I would hope by the end of the year, based on the progress with the vaccines, and I know, I've had so many friends that have had them, and the results seem seem good. Um, right. I would hope by the end of the year. Right. You mentioned yeah. vaccines. Tell me this, Gary. Are you requiring your employees to take vaccines? We're not requiring, but we're encouraging them. Right. And how is that going? So far, so good. I mean, right. Everybody's, there's not been anyone that's not taken it when they have the opportunity, so that's a positive thing. That is a good thing. Gary, I appreciate you joining me. This has been a great conversation. I enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome, You're folks. That is Gary Caldwell. Gary is the owner and the CEO at Caldwell Constructors. They are located in Greenville, South Carolina, and we have been talking about the construction outlook uh, today and uh, stick around on SCBiz TV. We've got another outlook out there if you want to browse around and find it. It's the employment outlook with Herb Dew, who is uh, with Human Technologies Incorporated. Stick around and we'll see you next time. Thanks.